come up here to talk, and you bring all those guns. These little things? For rabbits. That's what you come here for, to hunt rabbits. No, I come to ask you to do something for me. Because we're friends. That's right. I want you to go see Senor Tanner and tell him Valdez is coming. I think somebody else go. Listen, I've been here all day. There's no somebody else. There is just you in front of me. That's all. You sure of that? You bet your life on it? Or yours? No, no. No, what kind of talk is that with two friends? You want me to tell something to Mr. Tanner? All right, I'll go. Put the rabbit gun down. You wait here. I'll go tell Mr. Tanner what you say. Then I come back. And I tell you what he say. How's that? I'll be here. Huh? <laughs> Don't move. <laughs> democracy, yes, but it was torn by elements within. Above all, there was fear, fear of today, fear of tomorrow, fear of our neighbors, and fear of ourselves. Only when you understand that can you understand what Hitler meant to us, because he said to us, Lift your heads. Be proud to be German. There are devils among us. Communists, liberals, Jews, gypsies. Once these devils will be destroyed, your misery will be destroyed. It was the old, old story of the sacrificial lamb. What about those of us who knew better? We who knew the words were lies, and worse than lies. Why did we sit silent? Why did we take part? Because we loved our country. What difference does it make if a few political extremists lose their rights? What difference does it make if a few racial minorities lose their rights? It is only a passing phase. It is only a stage we are going through. It will be discarded sooner or later. Hitler himself will be discarded sooner or later. The country is in danger. We will march out of the shadows. We will go forward. Forward is the great password. And history tells how well we succeeded, Your Honor. We succeeded beyond our wildest dreams. The very elements of hate and power about Hitler that mesmerized Germany, mesmerized the world. We found ourselves with sudden powerful allies. Things that had been denied to us as a democracy were open to us now. The world said, go ahead, take it. Take it! Take Sudetenland, take the Rhineland, remilitarize it. Take all of Austria, take it! And then one day, we looked around and found that we were in an even more terrible danger. The ritual began in this courtroom, swept over the land like a raging, roaring disease. What was going to be a passing phase had become the way of life. Springtime outside, Slugger. 
You'd best go find out who you are. Come on. Now, what's wrong with you, you old buzzard? Come on. Don't be afraid. Out there, you can kick up the dust. You can dance to fiddle music. Watch the alfalfa bloom. If you like, you can see gold teeth, taste sweet whiskey or red-eyed gravy. The air breathes easy. Nights move faster. And you tell time by the clock. Now, you don't want to be a jailbird all your life, do you? Hmm? You're a highball and sparrow. So you fly high, old cock. Go out there and bite the stars for me. Find yourself a fat mama and make a family. You hear? Exactly how does a press agent work? Uh, well, answer the man, Sidney. He's trying to take you off the hook. You just saw a good example of it, Senator. A press agent eats a columnist's dirt and is expected to call it manna. But don't you help columnists by furnishing them with items? Sure. A columnist can't do without us, except our good and great friend J.J. forgets to mention that. You see, we furnish him with items. What, some cheap, gruesome gags? You print them, don't you? Yes, with your clients' names attached. That's the only reason the poor slobs pay you, to see their names in my column all over the world. Now I make it out you're doing me a favor? I didn't say The day I can't get along without a press agent's handouts, I'll close up shop and move to Alaska lock, stock, and barrel. <laughs> Sweep out my igloo. Here I come. Look, Manny, you rode in here on the Senator's shirt tail, so shut your mouth. Now come, J.J. That's a little too harsh. Anyone seems fair game for you tonight? This man is not for you, Harvey. And you shouldn't be seen in public with them, because that's another part of a press agent's life. They dig up scandal about prominent people and shovel it thin among columnists who give them space. There seems to be some illusion here that escapes me. We're friends, Harvey. We go as far back as when you were a fresh kid congressman, don't we? Why is it that everything you say sounds like a threat? Maybe it's a mannerism, because I don't threaten friends. But why furnish your enemies with ammunition? You're a family man, Harvey, and someday, God willing, you may want to be president. And here you are, out in the open, where any hep person knows that this one is toting that one around for you. What's on your mind? A request, sir. I'd like you to ask for another exec. Oh? Just like that, huh? My privilege, sir. Navy regulations. Well, I'd have to take it to the board. You went to them before. That's just it. I got what I wanted then. Why should I change it? Maybe I can enlighten you. There's a crew that's already accepted me as its captain. They have me decked out as a groom. Now that you're taking my place, I'd rather not go to the wedding. Are we discussing your pride, or are you embarrassed to face them? You'll be facing them yourself in a couple of days. The resentment's going to be twice as great with me on board. Mr. Bledsoe, let me be honest with you. I don't care about their resentment or yours. I wanted a boat. The board gave it to me. That's all there is. The board didn't give you a thing. You went to them, the poor desk commander with a tear in his eye. You told them if you could have me, a qualified commander for a backstop, you could do the job. That was your selling point, wasn't it? Mr. Bledsoe, your request for release is denied. Do you think that I want to go on punishing you? Uh, we've grown old together in penitentiaries, and in all that time, I've only asked one thing from you, cooperation. The only thing I've ever gotten back was defiance. Not once! Have you ever shown a sign of rehabilitation? Rehabilitation. Yes, rehabilitation. I wonder if you know what the word means. Do you? Now, don't be insulted.
unabridged Webster's International Dictionary says it comes from the Latin root habilis. The definition is to invest again with dignity. You consider that part of your job, Harvey, to give a man back the dignity he once had? Your only interest is in how he behaves. You told me that once a long time ago, and I'll never forget it. You'll conform to our ideas of how you should behave. And you haven't retreated from that stand one inch in 35 years. You want your prisoners to dance out the gates like puppets on a string, with rubber stamp values, impressed by you, with your sense of conformity, your sense of behavior, even your sense of morality. That's why you're a failure, Harvey. You want the whole science of penology because you rob prisoners of the most important thing in their lives, their individuality. On the outside, they're lost, automatons, just going through the motions of living. But underneath is a deep, deep hatred for what you did to them. First chance they get to attack society, they do it. The result, more than half come back to prison. Now, it's all here in my book. And I suggest you read it, and you read it thoroughly. You want it reaffirmed after all these years? Does your vanity need it that much? I wanted you desperately. My craving for you was so violent I could deny you nothing, not even a marriage that was bound to end in disaster. Why disaster? And it's a long way from a Pennsylvania steel town to Upper Park Avenue. Class distinction. You always claimed it never existed. Until I married you. And then I really found out how wrong I was. You see, I had my ideas of a wife were influenced by watching my mother ruin her health to bring up eight kids. Not that my demands on you would have been as high as that. But they would have included the proper running of a home and the bearing of children. About children. I did make it perfectly clear I know, clear I know. I the beautiful fashion model, that little hobby of yours. Your figure was too important to risk for posterity. I accepted the bargain. I have no complaints. But you have. You know you have, John. The same complaint as always. But I didn't love you when we got oh, married. please, let's not go into that. Well, why would I have married you if I didn't love you? After all, there were others. More important, then. They couldn't pay you the full price. What price? Enslavement. <laughs> oh, John, really, how ridiculous you are. If all I wanted to do was make my husband a slave, why would I have chosen you and not the others? Because where would the fun have been? Where would the fun have been enslaving men like that? A tame millionaire, a mincing baronet. Too well brought up to say anything when you deny them their conjugal rights. Too well mannered not to take your headaches at bedtime as just headaches at bedtime. Where would the fun have been turning your weapons on men like that? No, Anne, you were reaching into another class. You were looking for wild again. You remember that expression you used when you introduced me to your friends? My wild, roaring savage? That was always good for a laugh to turn your weapons on him, to, to make him sit up and beg at the whispered promise of what was his by right anyway, to goad him to such a fury of drink and rage that he'd kick open the locked door of your bedroom and damn near kill you. That really must have been fun. But if it means anything to you, you have the respect of at least one of the men you convicted. By all that is right in this world, your verdict was a just one. Thank you. What you said in the courtroom, it needed to be said. Judge Haywood, the reason I asked you to come was people those millions of people. I never knew it would come to that. You must believe it. You must believe it. Hey, Yana. It came to that the first time you sentenced a man to death you knew to be innocent. 